This is Chad. He's my new boyfriend. I love him. Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. I was finally able to save up enough money to get myself something to replace the much hated Bubble Magus Curve A5. I finally got the Deltec 600i, which is a DC pump that's controllable. What I'm showing you here is a quick unboxing just to show how well it was packed. Straight out of the box, I'm already impressed because it comes assembled. This is exactly what it looks like. No messing around with insufficient instructions, trying to figure out where everything goes. And with the pump housed inside the skimmer body, it has a very compact footprint. And here, let me show you a bonus feature. This is the collection cup. It also has a neck cleaner. Simply put the lid on and turn it. And this will keep the neck nice and clean. That improves efficiency apparently when running a skimmer. Again, I'm impressed. Here I've pulled the Curve A5. This thing did nothing but overflow until I fixed it using a non-manufacturer approved method. I've pulled it out. It will never see a sump again because I have plans for it. Okay, so here we are at the kitchen sink. I'm a ball of nerves. The reason I'm so nervous is all the problems I had for over a year with the Bubble Magus. I'm expecting the worst after that experience. So far, I could not be happier. I love this thing. Here's the controller. I have it set on two. And I just, I can't believe it compared with what happened with my Curve A5. Um, I think I was expecting wild overflow out of the cup and the lid being pushed off and foam everywhere and noise from the pump. But listen. Yeah, there's none of that. And look how nicely it's bubbling. I can hardly wait to get it in my sump and see what it does there. All right, so there it is. It actually fits really nicely in that spot. I haven't turned it on yet. We're gonna flip the switch and see what happens. Okay, the controller just came on. And the bubbles are starting. The white dial you see on the left at the front is the adjustment. And when you turn it counterclockwise, it reduces the amount of water in the body. When you turn it clockwise, it increases the amount. So if I want the bubbles to go higher, I turn that dial clockwise. And right now they're staying pretty low, so let's give that a try. I gave it two clockwise turns, probably one complete rotation, so that's not much. So I'm not going to make you watch me fiddle with it, but it's in, it's running, it fits. I'm very pleased with how it looks. This is a good time to talk about a feature of this skimmer which protects from overflow. I can't use it because I have an outside airline running in. But because my sump level remains constant, even if my return pump stops, I don't really need it. You can see where the bubble level is and where the water level is in this tube. And this tube is what is used to prevent the overflow. And here's how. This little piece of bent tubing is included with the skimmer. Here's how it works. I remove the air line and replace it with the piece of tubing. I'm positioning it so that the end of the small tube is inside the big tube. Now I'm going to simulate an overflow by turning the adjustment knob to increase the water level inside the skimmer body. Now watch what happens as the water gets too high. It fills that bent tube and then the air intake, and this completely blocks air from entering the pump. This prevents the creation of bubbles inside the skimmer body. Those would then rise up and overflow the cup. Instead, the water overflows from the tube. You can see here, there are no bubbles in the neck. And because the skimmer is so easily adjustable, it's a simple matter of rotating this dial again in the opposite direction to reduce the water level and get things back where they should be. 
As soon as the water level in the large tube drops below the small bent tube, the pump as it continues to draw will pull any water that's in the air intake system and eventually air will purge the water and bubbles will start to form again. Ingenious. So here we are after about five minutes of fiddling around with it and watching it. I'm just going to leave it running like this for a while. And guess what? I am so confident in this thing, I am going to leave the house and walk the dogs and leave it running. Look at Chad. Just look at him. We've been in here for about an hour and oh my god is he ever well behaved. Bubbles are coming up into the cup. The last thing I have to do now is attach the outside airline to the air intake. And instead of doing DIY, surprise, I got myself a store-bought skimmer stand. I was a little disgruntled when it arrived packed flat, and this meant I had to put it together. However, as it turned out, it worked out great because I did not need to use those two pieces at the side, which would allow it to be higher. It turned out to be the perfect height with just the main supports. So I got this in and under the skimmer, and it was exactly right. Update on Chad. Look at Chad. Skimming dry, that's what we like. Yep, had Chad for a little over a week now. And he is staying. He's part of the crew now. I tried the neck cleaner out. I'll just quickly show you how that works. Look at that. That's just rotating the lid. Yeah. That's why the neck is so clean. Even keeping the neck clean, eventually it was time to take the cup off and clean everything up. Because I set it to skim quite dry, it would take anywhere up to a month for it to reach the point where I really needed to clean it up. And though there wasn't much skimmate in the cup, I could always tell when it was time because oh boy, did it ever smell. And here we have it, a whole bunch of ugly. Once I get this all cleaned up, so I'm going to clean the entire skimmer. I'm going to tear it down, take everything apart, and get things spick and span. Chad has been working hard for roughly seven months at this point. Running the skimmer in vinegar and water for a little while loosened a lot of the stuff that had built up. I decided to try and get as much cleaned up as I could while I had the vinegar and water still here. Then it could just drain away and I could take everything else apart. The water level tube was easy to clean up because I was able to get the brush in and it came out nice and clean. The water level adjustment tube, however, was a different story. There was some stuff in the middle that I thought I would might be able to get by unscrewing this entire black rod, but it only went so far. So I decided that I was going to approach it from either end. I cleaned out the bottom end first, and then I took the tube and screwed the stopper down past the intake hole so that I could get a really small brush inside. And this actually worked pretty well. I was unable to get everything, so I poured vinegar into it and set it aside for a little while to soak. The air intake was pretty easy to remove because it's just a friction fit and I was easily able to remove the hose from the Venturi. Cleaned that all up. Next, I had to remove the skimmer body from the bottom plate, so this screw had to come out. Once that was off, I could see how really dirty it was. The bottom plate is made up of two layers with a space between. Water flows between those layers as part of the functionality of the skimmer, and yes, it was dirty in there too. It was easy to slide the pump off the little track and get this thing scrubbed up. Now, back to the tube with the vinegar. You can see most of it leaked out, but it was quite easy to get the rest of it cleaned up because the soaking did loosen things. And the last thing to do before tackling the pump was to clean up the skimmer body. Because this came assembled, I had not had an opportunity to see how the pump was put together. And now I was getting a chance to see how it came apart. It did come apart relatively easily. However, this wheel assembly with the impeller and the magnet and the needle wheel, I felt like it should come apart, but I just felt like I was forcing it. I couldn't get the center white shaft out. 
So I went to the other parts of the pump first before tackling it again. There were a lot of chunks of crud with fibrous stuff in it. And I think it was animal hair maybe. It turned out the best tool to use to get that out a little bit at a time was a fork. Did a great job. Now the pump body. This back plate came off quite easily, but I was very careful with it because that's where the electric goes in. It cleaned up really well. One final place to clean and I was ready to put things back together. Without getting that o-ring in the right place, nothing would compress down properly. It took me several tries, but once I got it right, everything went back together very easily. Before I forget, let me tell you where I got my skimmer. I got it from Adam at Battle Corals. The entire purchase experience was excellent. I highly recommend them if you're in the market for one of these. Oops. Good thing the skimmer body was large enough that it was easy to put my hand inside and get this thing screwed back on. And finally, the air intake, the hose, the two tubes. Once these were all reinstalled, we were ready to go. All right, so we're back in after cleaning. And now it's time to flip the switch and turn them back on. Ooh, we're turning the chat on. There's the water, and there's the bubbles. Going up, and yes, the airline is still in place. <laughs> Once in a while, I knock that off by accident. And we're back in business. I love this skin. Okay, by now, it's pretty obvious how much I love this thing, but I think it's time to talk specific pros and cons. First of all, compact footprint, five and a half by eight and a half inches. And this thing is quiet. Break-in period was pretty much overnight. The neck cleaner is really handy and a great bonus. And of course, the ingenious overflow control. The press of a button on the controller gives you a 10 minute feed mode. The DC controllable pump combined with the water adjuster gives you unlimited options for dialing in easily. This skimmer is easy to clean and let's face it, easy maintenance is regular maintenance. Now let's take a look at the cons. Yep, the only thing I could come up with is price. These things are expensive. However, I put skimmers in the category of you get what you pay for when it comes to reefing equipment, and I have a closet full of cheap ones that never worked right to prove that. And the pros and cons I've talked about here are things that matter to me. Everyone has different requirements and will be interested in different specifications. For example, I don't care how much air this thing pushes through, I just don't want it to be too much air so as to cause endless overflow. On a recent trip to Niagara Falls, New York to pick up parcels, I stopped at the dollar store. The reason? To pick up gel super glue that we can't get at the dollar store here in Canada. And because of Dave Lembo, I knew what to look for. I got nine packages of the three for a dollar. Not the two for a dollar, the three for a dollar. So thanks Dave, what a bargain. You're my hero.